Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. I'm continuing my laziness by highlighting other YouTube creators that have some really good content, but really small channels. One such creator is B-Ball for Life. And he had a really interesting exchange with a flat earther the other day that I really got a kick out of. And I thought that I would share that with you guys. So cue up the music and let's get it going. Morning, everyone. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, last night I put this video out and apparently there were some problems with the sound. So I thought I'd take a minute and just redo it and narrate it a little bit. This is from my friend B-Ball for Life who lives near Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And he put a video up the other day and was challenged by a flat earther. So he decided to have a little bit of fun with him. So let's go ahead and see what we have. I decided to go ahead and narrate this a little bit because some people complained that there was uh, a little problem with to be a little visually impaired and not being able to read this. So they thought it'd be more fun if I talked through it. Now this Nicholas Pitts is a flat earther that came on B-Ball's channel and challenged him for evidence of a globe earth. He says there's 177 miles of flat earth per the US Navy. And uh, quite frankly, it looks like B-Ball might be in the Navy and kind of took exception to that. You know, B-Ball says, well, do you have any flat earth proof? So he goes over to his channel, which consists mostly of cat videos, apparently. So he hasn't seen any uh, flat earth evidence put out on this guy's channel. So they decide to go back and forth a little bit. Now, Gavin Reed wants him to give one globe proof that isn't horse manure. Good luck. Well, B-Ball counters with the Southern Celestial Pole. As a matter of fact, there are two Celestial Poles, one rotating clockwise and the other rotating counterclockwise. And he even puts up some videos of it from his own backyard. South rotates clockwise. And shortly, we'll see the north rotates counterclockwise. Well, Gavin Reed counters by saying, hey, you can't really tell anything looking, looking up in the sky. He says that these southern poles can be happening on a flat earth as well, and it's all magnetic anyhow. It's just the sun and the stars moving over over the night sky of the flat plane, kind of like a welding spark. And here's a 19 day image of the sun. Doesn't look like a welding spark to me. Seems to be maintaining its size very nicely. Doesn't get smaller or larger as it moves around and it's spherical and rotating. That's a pretty good proof that the sun is not just a light in the sky. You can see a lot of details on it, including solar flares. And he points out the fact that this is just a simple Google search that any of us can do. You've got to be able to do some research. Oh, now Short Bear is saying that he's destroyed every one of these globe proofs that he's put up so far. Really? And then proceeds to dump a bunch of questions on him. You know, the constant uh, Jaron put out 15 different things in 20 seconds. So here we go. Where can we observe scientific method proving gas pressure without a container? Any proof of visible curvature? Where can we observe mass attracting mass in nature? So the first one is that we're going to go ahead and have a look at gas pressure next to a vacuum without a container. And here is the standard or uh, what the atmosphere looks like dynamically and how the pressure gradient works. Here are the layers of the atmosphere. There are five different layers. Talks about ozone and atmospheric optics, modeling the atmosphere, etc. Now we're going to go on to any proof of curvature, visible curvature. And be ball for life talks about bringing a drone up to 650 feet and demonstrating curvature out over the ocean by compressing the, um, the image side to side. And here's Diamond Head in Hawaii. 
and he's got a blank test from altitude and from ground level showing the bottom of Diamond Head is hidden at ground level and visible at altitude. It's actually a pretty neat blink test. That's obviously from the beach and the other was drone footage. Looks like he's five or 600 feet high. Where in nature do we observe mass attracting mass? Well, the Cavendish experiment. And here's BM Furball doing his Cavendish experiment in Korea in live time. He did this on the internet. We watched him do it over a period of months. He made this in one of the rooms of his house. He isolated it and got a very good example of mass attracting mass. What proof do you have that the Earth spins? Well, a Foucault pendulum. Now this is kind of neat too, because with a Foucault pendulum, you can actually determine your latitude. And there's a mathematical formula for that. And I think he's going to put it up here. And here's how you do a Foucault pendulum. You have a long string. You have a heavy mass. The reason that you use a lighter to cut the string that holds the mass up is to avoid putting a little spin or a little distortion into the swing. And as you can see here, he's got a paintbrush on this thing with a little, um, little thing of paint and it's actually tracing it out and they're measuring the latitude and the rotation. This is kind of neat because he put the mathematics in there. This is a big thing that people that actually believe in science do, but flat earthers tend not to. People in science like to actually measure things. So after 41 minutes, he gets 7.89 degrees of rotation. Let's see if we can figure out his latitude from that information. And he's at 49.8 degrees. Let's see what he actually, what his actual latitude is. Forty-eight point four, one point four degree error. Not bad for doing something in your garage, don't you think? By the way, that's less than a hundred miles off. That's better than I did with my Eratosthenes experiment last spring. Well, it's just over 100 miles. Now, there's actually a way to determine how long the pendulum has to be, and it has to be quite long. To be honest with you, I haven't bothered looking into that yet. Now, number five is how can you see lighthouses, quote unquote, further than you should? That's that's the next question of the uh, the globe. So now B-Ball for Life is talking about basically how the atmosphere works and how atmospheric refraction works. And he's got his sources right here to document that. Now, B-Ball challenges... Um, him to provide one citation that supports the flat earth. Just one. That's pretty typical. Well, I don't know about you, but that's a man after my own heart. Why don't you stop by and check out his channel? Let's get Team Bob to get him a few subscribers. So, Thank you very much for stopping by. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan, and happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and happy Hanukkah to y'all. Take care.